Co-host, first things first, right after our show now. Nick Wright joining us. Let's not waste any time. Sunday night, Niners, no. my beloved Jimmy Garoppolo and Russell yeah. Wilson. Let's start with Russ, who's got a new Subway commercial. Yeah. It is totally lit. So good. So awesome. Anyway. So bad. You're so bad. How patient should Denver be? Because we did say that series at the end when Russell said, oh, I'm going to run. And he was totally effective. How patient should we be with Russ? Well, they've got well, they've got no choice. I mean, he has a five-year contract that does not kick in for another two years. So, I mean, they listen. They are married to this guy who has given us no indications whatsoever over the last forget twelve quarters over the last twelve months that he's still an above-average NFL quarterback. I know you love him, and I know. Listen, the only person happier than Colin Cowherd when Russell Wilson finally made a single play in that game was Chris Collinsworth, who was calling the game, who sounded like he wanted to cry watching Russell Wilson his skip passes and then overthrow passes and refuse to run the ball. But he's going to be 34. He's undersized. He won't run the ball anymore. He doesn't seem that comfortable. And all of a sudden, Colin, doesn't it seem like maybe some of the offensive line troubles follow Russell Wilson around? Oh, boy. Listen, seven years ago, he was unbelievable, but he's not that player anymore. So, yeah, they're going to be patient. He's going to be their quarterback this year and next year and the year after. But uh, I think you can rip up your AFC West Broncos <laughs> uh, division winner ticket if you haven't already, despite the fact that they're 2-1. Well, they're going to beat the Raiders this weekend, and you're going to regret saying that now. Maybe. Raiders now, are going to win eventually. I mean, the Raiders aren't going to go winless, my friend. Seven, it's been nine months or longer, I think, since Jimmy Garoppolo got every snap at practice. His first game was against the top five pass rush. He struggled a little, and you've already got him as a disaster a for this year, right? A little. Well, listen, I listen to your show. I watch your show. You know this. It's very popular. I think you talked about how he didn't get the playbook, right? Right. I'm just curious what playbook he would have needed to know you're not allowed to run out the back of the end zone. Like, what page of the playbook was that? And, Colin, this was a game where Jimmy G went with respect, full Orlovsky, and it was not one of the two worst plays he made in the game. It wasn't even the worst play he made on that play. He ran out of the back of the end zone, and it wasn't the worst thing he did because a second later, he did the old eyes closed pick six, and an hour later, he threw the game-losing interception. I had to listen to everyone in the media, my co-host Chris Broussard, my mentor Colin Cowherd, everyone be like, listen, we all feel terribly for Trey Lance, but obviously the Niners are better right now. What would Trey Lance have done? Would he, have, would he have lined up for the opposing team? What could he have done on Sunday night that would have been more damaging than what Jimmy Garoppolo did? All we have is a half decade of evidence that this is who Jimmy G is. I don't, it is baffling to me yeah. why otherwise intelligent people <laughs> so, defend him as an above average quarterback. Is, is he that handsome? It can't be just that he's that handsome. There's other <laughs> handsome quarterbacks. I don't get it, but that's fine. I mean, you know, you can you can enjoy those 10 points his team miraculously <laughs> got as he gave the game away. All right, here's something we may agree on. I came out of the Bucks Tampa game and I'm like, had you taken Alan Lazard and Aaron Jones away from Green Bay and Tampa was healthy, they would have blown him out. How was that game close? It's incredible it came down to one play on a two-point conversion. What was your takeaway on Fox's game of the week? Packers yeah. narrowly edging Tampa. Yeah, so for, I think, slightly different reasons, I also came away feeling like, okay, Tampa's going to be fine. Yeah. But the same concerns I had about Aaron Rodgers prior to the game just got, I, I felt like, almost doubled down on during the game. And that is, and you, this is where you redeem yourself for your really, really bad Jimmy G and Russell Wilson takes because you were so right on Aaron in this regard. He might be the greatest player in NFL history when things are going well. But the moment there's a bit of adversity, yep. it goes 180 degrees. Colin, this game was Packers touchdown drive, Packers touchdown drive, Packers driving to go up 21-3. to And then there's the Aaron Jones fumble on the right. great Vita Vea play. 
And from that moment forward, Aaron was a totally different player. Yep. And I have seen that movie before against the Niners in the playoffs last year. Packers slice them down the field to go score a touchdown, get the ball back. They're going right down the field. Mercedes Lewis fumbles. And Aaron turns into a totally different player. We, the, the concern for Aaron is when things go sideways as they will inevitably happen at some point on a playoff run, do you have the steady hand? Do you stay the same guy? And you can read it all over his face, his body language, everything. It He just changes. And that mistake wasn't even his fault. Aaron Jones just fumbled. Great play by Vita Vea. And so if that was your biggest concern with the Packers going into the season, as it was for me, this game didn't make me feel better about it because they got the win. It made me feel worse about it. Because once again you can see two totally different Aaron Rodgers in the exact same football game, and that's concerning for the Packers. Yeah, Mahomes. Tampa, on the other hand, the defense is awesome, yeah. and they'll get healthier. So, yeah. yes, I agree with you there. Yeah, by the way, Marino, Elway, Mahomes can almost be defined by when things go poorly, overcoming it. Fourth quarter drives, throwing picks, overcoming it. Mahomes, that's literally his legacy now. Beyond his talent is the best come-from-behind quarterback Probably of my life. Elway, Ever. Elway was great. Brady was great. Pick sixes in Super Bowls. Then he drives down the field. Aaron, it's a complete hole. Minute and a half left. Now, I will admit, I have defended Kansas City all week. I said, listen, it was a disastrous special team Sunday. They'll never have another Sunday like that. Every year there's right. a game for a good team. You have to bury the tape. I don't want to see that tape. It doesn't sure. define them. It happens. Buffalo, though, so clearly outplayed their team, lost, that I, in a jumbled NFL, I'm like, I'm going to make Buffalo. Yeah, of course. You got to leave them number one. <laughs> yeah, of course, Colin. How could you not leave them number one? What have they won? The last three Super Bowls? I mean, they're the greatest team we've ever seen. They're going to, I know they're two and one, but I still think they might go 20 and 0. <laughs> Who cares that they haven't won a close game in two years? Who cares? that this team handles adversity so well that their offensive coordinator is looking like a petulant child and that Josh Allen is, is what is he doing? At the end of the first half, forgetting the rules? Or was it the end of the second half? Or was it both of them when they screwed up time score situation? Like, who, the, the, listen, Colin, leave them number one. They're so good. They're so clearly head and shoulders better than everyone else. The fact that they can't win close games won't matter. They'll just beat everyone in the playoffs by 21 points. I mean, they'll certainly have a lead against anyone with like 10 seconds left, and they could never blow that in a playoff game. <laughs> so who cares the evidence that the last two years that if they don't blow their your doors off, they lose to you? Leave them number one. It's great. Yeah, I mean, they, they've earned it, Colin, because of all the championships that organization <laughs> and that quarterback have won. Okay. The show is called First Things First. It is now after our show. Uh, it's the show yeah. with the unlimited clothing budget and set budget. It is a yeah. money stream like nothing else in the industry, and I'm very not it's jealous or petty at all. Correct. Congratulations on no, all your No, not at all. Listen, you evidently have an unlimited dinner budget. I see, your, uh, I see who you're going out to eat with. I follow you on Twitter. <laughs> see you later, Kyle. Mick Wright. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.